Thank you very much, Taiwan InnoTech Expo, for the invitation. It is an excellent platform to exchange and learn from the different tech leaders, innovators, and sustainability practitioners in different industries across the globe. I'm honored to take this opportunity and share with you our experience from Covestro, and more specifically, from engineering plastic materials perspective, how we approach sustainability in this post-pandemic world. My name is Roy Chen, and I'm currently heading sustainability solutions globally in the engineered plastics business entity of Covestro. As you may know, Covestro is a material science company where we serve many key industries, including mobility, electronics and electrical and appliances, healthcare and constructions through our material solutions, such as engineered plastics, where I belong. Many of these industries that we serve are facing major changes with such a pace that no one has ever experienced. Take mobility as an example. The way how people and goods travel from A to B have fundamentally shifted towards a more autonomous, electrified and a sharing model. These new trends are transforming how the industries operate their businesses, how the transportation infrastructures are rebuilt and how regulations and policies are reshaped. Beyond these, sustainability is also playing a key role in the transformation. Cars need to be more energy efficient, more independent from fossil resources, and with lower carbon footprint in both the build and use phases. As one of the key players in the mobility supply chain, we at Covestro are also actively participating and embracing such change helping our industry partners to transform more sustainably. For example, we provide lightweight material solutions to make cars more energy efficient. We develop new materials for the EV battery packs and the EV charging infrastructure. More recently, we are launching a portfolio of low carbon footprint materials for different mobility applications, from engineering plastics containing post-consumer or post-industrial plastic waste to the use of raw materials that are coming from alternative sources such as bio-waste. This growing portfolio is designed for the industries to choose and adopt in various ways according to their different sustainability targets. Such a portfolio of sustainability material solutions is also applicable to another key industry that we serve, an industry that is particularly thriving in markets like Taiwan and that is electronics. Since almost a decade ago, we have been supporting the major global electronics OEM brands to receive accolades for their products sold to the US and European markets by providing them with materials that contain different ratio of post-consumer recycled plastics, or PCR in short form, for the manufacturing of IT products such as laptops and printers. Behind this PCR portfolio is a whole lot of dedication from us and the value chain partners to ensure the stable supply of certified, qualified recycled sources that fulfill all the safety and performance related standards and requirements so that we can enjoy the functional, economical and ecological attributes at the same time when we use these products. And we don't just stop there. The call for a more sustainable environment, particularly the need to address climate change, has intensified significantly in recent years. Countries and companies have set up clear path towards climate neutrality goals with quantified measures and timelines to decarbonize. We are not alone. Our chemical industry is not alone. Our downstream customers and their industries are certainly not alone. Since 2015, we have started announcing different sustainability targets, including one that relates to how we invest on innovation. 80% of our R&D project expenditures will contribute to the various UN sustainability development goals. Furthermore, by end of 2020, we have achieved the reduction of almost half of our specific greenhouse gas emission from the benchmark in 2005, a progress that's well on track of our targets. As we speak today, 
we are preparing to further announce more sustainability-related goals with clear roadmaps to support our vision and ambitions. And talking about vision, we have recently announced our brand new vision called We Will Be Fully Circular as the guiding principle for the entire company's transformation and operations towards our climate neutral ambitions. As a material company, we are naturally well positioned as the scope three emission of our downstream customers. And therefore, we believe by closing the material loop and related to that, closing the carbon loops, this circular approach would be a very important path for us and for our downstream customers to achieve climate neutrality. What we mean by closing the material or carbon loops can be summarized by the following four key areas that we are focusing on right now. First, alternative raw materials. As I mentioned earlier, we are building a growing portfolio of material solutions that are using raw materials alternative to fossil resources, such as bio-waste, and in some recent technological breakthrough, directly using CO2 as raw materials. Replacing fossil resources with renewable sources would directly contribute to significant carbon footprint reduction of our products. Within our engineering plastics portfolio, we have products with this bio-waste sources that can reduce as much as 80% of our product carbon footprint compared to the fossil-based versions. Second, innovative recycling for end-of-life solutions. We believe that to close the material loops, we have to look into the end-of-life phase of the products and materials. Currently, we are participating in the mechanical recycling activities with our PCR materials that I mentioned earlier. Within mechanical recycling, one key challenge is the access of good quality, well-sorted recycled plastics to meet the downstream customer's needs. With that, we have created innovative collaboration models with our value chain partners, including the recent success by partnering with one of the biggest bottled drinking water providers in China, Nongfu Spring, to recycle more than 1 million polycarbonate water bottles every year. As one of our PCR sources for our downstream applications such as electronics. But besides this, there are also lots of end-of-life waste which are difficult to sort and difficult to be mechanically recycled. And therefore, we are investing in the development of various chemical recycling technologies to aim at increasing the recycling rate and recovery rate of more waste streams. Our third focus area is the use of renewable energy. As an energy intensive sector, we have already started switching our energy mix towards the more renewable sources. Since 2019, we have signed some of the world's largest wind energy contracts for our manufacturing sites in Europe. One of the key sites is in Antwerp, Belgium, where nearly half of its electricity demand is already covered by renewable energy, saving about 39 kilotons of CO2 emissions annually. When combining some of these efforts in the first three focus areas, we can create significant impact for our downstream customers. One example is our recent announcement of the launch of the world's first climate neutral polycarbonates. This achievement is realized by the combination of the use of bio waste source in our materials and the use of renewable energy in the production. And this is a great demonstration of the potentials of our joint efforts to maximize our contribution towards climate neutrality for the value chain. And talking about value chain, it brings me to the last and probably the most important one of the four focus areas, cross-industry collaboration. No one can achieve climate neutrality alone, and therefore collaboration is a must, especially in this post-pandemic world. The pandemic has reminded us how the biggest crises demand a globally ambitious response and has driven us to confront the global threat of climate change more forcefully through even closer collaboration. In this regard, TIE 
offers a fantastic opportunity for dialogues, exchanges and collaboration to happen across industries and around the globe. Such collaboration, regardless of scale and maturity, will likely pave the way for breakthrough technologies and businesses models to help us tackle the major global challenges facing us today. It is in this spirit of collaboration that I wish TIE a great success. That great partnership will be forged from here and that together we can create a more sustainable and climate neutral future. Thank you.